Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to taste an unsung hero tea for you. At least that's how I feel about this tea. We have had this tea for a long time uh, and we haven't done a tasting video about it. Mm. And you know, in general, I find black tea get a little bit less attention than they deserve. So we're gonna dive in and taste some Jochu homemade. What is Jochu homemade? Very important. It sounds yes. like just another blob of Chinese <laughs> tea name. It's but not. Uh, you probably are very familiar with the green tea version of this tea, which is Dragonwell Longjing. Yes, Jiuqi Hongmei is the black tea version of Longjing. So if you're intrigued by this, let's dive in. If you're new to the channel, we cover all kinds of awesome uh, information about tasting grade Chinese tea, from tea travel to tea tastings like this one, uh, just all kinds of stuff. So if that interests you, make sure you click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you'll know whenever we make a new video. Well, let's have a look at the dry leaves while I warm up all the tea wares. Yeah, I really love this. Uh, the leaf of Jiuqiu Homei has always been kind of one of my favorite. It's a really uh, dark, wiry, um, deep, deep brown, almost black, wiry, tangly kind of uh, leaf. The aroma has a little a gentle, resinous, smoky quality to it that I really love. And um, I just want to talk about the, the hint of smokiness here because I know some people are kind of like scared away or they don't like smoky tea, any of our smoked tea, I would recommend you try them. They may change your mind about smoky tea. I think a lot of people have encounters with sort of burnt tire style smoky tea. This is a like really, really potent, almost except yeah. a smoky, there's no other notes you can Precisely, detect. like almost yeah. flavor. This is just the natural, the process induced gentle smoky hints of sweetness. Uh, I just can warm it up uh, in the guy oh, way. Let's do it. Yeah. Make that easier. Just smell. And just crazy oh, I still curly. Have that, the, the, the fruity tartness. Yes, yes, yes. Really lovely leaf. I've always, uh, I don't know, I've always enjoyed this leaf. Kind of like Longjin. Maybe it's the cultivar. I just like this leaf. Even though Longjin's really flat, I always love how it's silky and smooth too. It reminds me a little bit, like besides what we all talk about, uh, those notes, but when those notes mingle together, it, mm -hmm. it reminds mm -hmm. me of Chinese ink. Oh, <laughs> so that I don't know. What, what's a Chinese ink? What I mean is, uh, you know, when you write with a brush, you have the ink stone and you have to grind it with a little bit of a water, that kind of ink. Now it's more of that gentle, yes. like a smoke. It's it's interesting for Not me. For me, the smokiness is actually more gentle now that it's warmed up, and more of the tea and more, more of the smoothness. It's yeah. different. Yeah. It's a, even though we talk about smoke, and now this smoke is different, and mm. almost like a whiskey, like a peated whiskey, takes yes. away the alcohol smell in yes. it. Yes. That kind of a sweet smoke. Sweet, it. grainy, fruity kind yes, of yes. aroma. I quite enjoy watching the dry leaves first get waters and those air bubbles, like just mm. going up almost a, a little bit. Of, I, I guess that's why people like uh, bubbling waters and stuff. Yeah, it's almost it like that's poetic, visually, right? yes, very enticing. Soothing. <laughs> Awkward moment of silence. I can feel this. <laughs> I can feel this. His brain is accelerating, trying to squeeze out something. I'm really thirsty. Right. I I have been doing some video on my own and doing brewing videos and stuff, so I'm quite uh, used to like it's totally. I feel like it's fine to have a just a waiting moment. There's not much talk, so personally, I feel quite comfy. But I can feel that hair. 
Me too. I could also feel it. Which color do you want today? Today I will be yellow, my traditional color. Okay. Thank you. This is different again. Mm -hmm. Much subdued or not at all smoky. More grain. I would say subdued, but still there, but it has that grainy, fruity. Mm, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of used to this tea. I really enjoy this tea. So for me, it, it's almost identifiable just on the liquor aroma. Mm. This Jochu homemade. Yeah. It's interesting because certain teas like this one, we drink quite a lot and a lot of times because because I'm really familiar with this tea. So I, this video in this tea on the camera gave me a chance to re-experience this tea, you know, yeah. more in detail, which yeah. I oftentimes yeah. don't do once you're, you know, this is just the tea you go to. Once it gets habitual, yes. or you start to just have it as a, as a, it's not like a daily tea for us, but it's not an infrequent tea either. Mm. How about, oh, you haven't had your first sip yet. The first sip really brings back for me what you said about the sort of a whiskey, mm. um, Yes. Yeah, a nice cask aged whiskey without that, the alcohol zinginess. <laughs> it is, it is. Rich, rich and oh. thick. Really, um. Mm. Really different. Like the other day, yesterday morning, we had in hole number nine, right? I don't know why. Like, Spring, usually I think about the jasmine green tea and stuff, but lately yeah. we have been drinking a lot of black tea and it's just... Well, we've had that cold still. snap and it's really oh, nice right, to have. Right, right. I've been kind of dialing in the warming black teas to kind of help with the cold snap. Yeah, and it still feels very cheerful and lovely. It's quite different than that mm. one. The Inho right. number 9 has a really like a pronounced stone fruit. Mm -hmm. That sweet and uh, dry stone fruit, that sweet and tar mingle together, that yeah. kind of note, right? Yeah, this doesn't sweet. have that. Yeah. This is like really tea version of a whiskey tasting note. Yeah, yeah, much more malty grainy. Malty grainy, yeah. Still with a hint of that malty sweetness, but not that fruity sweetness that we would get in a lot of black teas. Right. Mmm. <sighs> This is a, what I call really dry smell, dry like in when you describe a, a wine or whiskey that not sweet. It doesn't have right, much sweet right. notes here at all. Yeah, yeah, dry and sort of like almost like a dry roasty aroma. Mm. Really, but not quite roasty, roasty like. No, not like a charcoal smell, but that. It's just that, something that is well dried, well dried. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's yeah. no fermentation, there's no oxidation, there's no... Like, you know, fruit or things when they're humid or something, when they start to uh, ripen or even turning, they have that intense sweetness in it. That's just don't have any of them. Yeah. And maybe that's why they call that dry, mm -hmm. when it's not sweet. I never that know is, why that is. That is, yeah. Oh. And the, the tartness you talked about in uh, Ying Hong number no. 9, or the maybe the bite that some other black teas can bring, this tea is mellow. Yes. I mean, it is, uh, the flavor is bold, resilient. It has that really deep, thick, grain, multi sweetness. It's bold flavor, but it's smooth, really smooth. Mm. Looking forward to the next infusion. Has a little tartness though, like a what? Okay, I don't know. I, did, I didn't get it. I just got really no, no, no. Smooth. Different temperature. Here's mm. the thing. Uh, He's finished. He's finished. Right. I still right. have a little bit because I was talking and I was brewing, and the temperature is significantly lowered because I only have like a little bit. And we cup. know, and we know your tart meter and my tart meter. Oh, we're different. Kind of different. We, we're different. We have this discussion with fruit a lot. Yes. Um, how a fruit will be super tart for her, and I'm like, mm, it has a little hint, like, but we have kind yeah, of different something about. But this is not that kind of tart. This mm -hmm. is the sensational tart I often talk about on the side of my tongue that 
the back of my tongue on both sides. Uh, I call that tart. Yeah, and this is where, you know... Not vinegar, not fruit tart, just want to specify. Right, yeah, no, and that's why, you know, talking about tea and giving it these words and stuff, it's it's not fruitless, it's just not for no reason, it's to try and share our individual perceptions because mm. they're so individual and unique and just to kind of right. come to some kind of understanding. So, you know, Jen and I obviously understand each other's ways right. of describing quite well. When you meet a new tea taster, you kind of have to normalize that. Calibrate, right? Calibrate. You gotta do calibrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's Similar actually... to your mom right. and the roasters when she's learning the language out in the tea fields, which blew right. my mind. Actually, remind me of one of the comments we got a while ago. We talk about, uh, I think he has was a Liu Bao Cha or something. He said, Oh, I didn't taste any of the, the Liu Bao Cha uh, I had. I didn't taste any of the tasting notes you have. Uh, that on the video, it was a, a YouTube comment. Mm, that's right. And, yeah. uh, uh, and he tasted the things that was on his package. I think that's a good thing to address here for pretty much all teas. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes people say, say Jiu Jiu Hong Mei or Long Jing, any of the teas, you're thinking, yeah. if I get this, I get that taste in those. I think... Uh, Long Jing equals Long Jing. Long Jing from source A equals Long Jing from source yeah, B equals Long Yeah, which is not quite the same. Yeah, not at all, I would not say. Not at all. And in, in terms of dark tea, the fermentation and stuff, it was it could vary a lot. So mm -hmm. I look at a tea name, say Jiu Jiu Hong Mei, think about t-shirt. This guy is wearing a t-shirt, right? right? So what do you know about the t-shirt? I know it's a short sleeve. Mm -hmm. I know it's not a skirt. I know it's not, we're not talking about pants. So is that cotton? Is that fast uh, dry? Yeah. Is there a uh, print on it? Is that uh, oversized yeah. or tapered? There, that's the difference. Yeah. Then you have the difference of the person. In terms of tea, we're like uh, how I interpreted those are different than him, mm -hmm. than you. Yeah. Uh, that it's almost like in terms of a t-shirt, is that a good fit for me might not be a good fit for him. Right. So the cut, the cut or between brands, the medium size are actually different. Yeah, that's a really good metaphor right? for understanding. And that's not just, that's not black tea, that's down to a Joe Chu Homei from here. And a exactly, one from there. exactly. Mm. And or then you have tea. also with the tea, you have a brewing and your sipping temperature and stuff. So uh, I wouldn't worry too much that if you taste, uh, say, if you taste our Jiu Jiu Hong Mei and you didn't detect the notes of what that we have, I feel like it was okay too. Because I really don't know how you brewed it, what's yeah. your tasting experience, and you know, even the food we eat before oh, yeah. could affect how we feel about this tea. Uh, I think that as is that fun or not? It's a part of a fun tasting thing. Uh, in the end, yeah. for us, it's, you know, as tea lovers, it's about do I like this toast or is it exactly. not toast, taste? <laughs> do I like this uh, taste or not? That's more important to me. Yeah, it's kind of different. Like if you want to go, it's so complicated, you can go completely nuts with it and really dive into it and get into it. Totally fine if that's mm. what you want to do. But on the other hand, you don't, don't feel like you have to do that at all mm. the, like we always say when we do how to brew and all of that you don't get too you can get absorbed with that you can go completely nuts on all the details and parameters go full full scientific method hey that's fine that, that's not really our thing and it doesn't have to be like that you can just intuitively brew and the main thing is is how's it hitting you and do you like it and if the answer is no that's okay if the answer is yes that's even better you know and just experiment and have fun that's really what it's all about this is really smooth. I want to really mm. silky smooth. Super smooth. smooth. Mm. smooth, round, full, full mouth feel. Right. Mm. I feel like we brew this tea a lot of times in a in a, like a, the in our teapot tea or our tea jar. <laughs> our, our teapot is the actually big a jar. brew. Mm. I found that one doesn't bring good texture like this. I mm. drink that tea. There's nothing wrong with it's the texture. It's delicious. Right? Mm -hmm. It's delicious, but uh, didn't even bring my mind to think, oh, that's a texture, either thin or thick or silky. I just didn't yeah. think about yeah. texture. But when I have this, the first thing hits me is how smooth it is, that's, how yeah. integrated the nose is. It's very mm -hmm. hard for mm -hmm. me to say, oh, that's a fruity. 
oh this is uh, like floral I don't feel that at all it's just everything very gently tucked well fit together yeah, yeah just integrated and the where the where the teapot style really kind of flattens it out so we, we get great flavor but mm -hmm. this the gong fu is really delivering yeah that mouth feel that texture. Right? it is that is so I hadn't noticed that but yes we often have this in the teapot which is delicious but not as um, dimensional if that makes any sense mm. okay third infusion mm -mm. I'm gonna take a minute and tell them about the uh, about the Coopers <laughs> no just to say we're also into bird watching which I'm not gonna bore you with here on an, our on the Gen T channel but we do have another channel where we do get into some of our cool other hobbies so if you're into that check in the description down below I'll put a link and that's all I'll say about it zero about Cooper I thought you said it's about the Coopers oh just as just we saw some recently but they probably don't know anyway it's a hawk it's a cool hawk <laughs> Go check the other channel. Yesterday, somebody noticed we're birding and asked, Oh, what are you looking at? That? What's that bird? He says it's a Cooper's hawk. And the gentleman was like, Okay, and what is that? <laughs> no, he actually didn't say that. He said, no? is, is that a hawk? And oh. I said, Yes, it's a Cooper's hawk. And he was like, No, after he asked, What is that? I... Yeah, and I said, It's a kind of hawk. Okay. <laughs> which he, so he, so he basically had it. It was a hawk, but he just didn't know which kind of hawk. So okay. I thought maybe I'll give him a little more detail. He didn't want more detail. <laughs> Always remember when you're sipping hot tea to really take that slurpy, slurpy sip. Lots of uh, aeration so you don't burn your mouth and especially don't burn your throat. When it's steady, yeah. When you sip it, when it's hot. Let me try again before I finish the sentence. Mm, really steady, like. Oh. Mm, so, this is just want to confirm what I notice is when I have this tea really like hot, freshly brewed. It's and how should I say? When it's hot, straight compared to lower temperature, more smokiness there. Mm -hmm. Which I love that kind of a, you know, tasting profile. If you don't mm -hmm. like, consider lower the temperature mm -hmm. to drink or to brew. I didn't lower the temperature to brew. I don't know how that would affect it. But when I drink that low temperature, that smokiness is mostly gone. More subdued, yeah. yeah. Almost gone. And then I also compared just now, slurp which I really like to do, strongly suggest you to do, mm. and strongly, strongly suggest you to do if you're sipping hot tea. Mm. Um, that aeration brings out more smokiness than I just sip that more quietly. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that? I do. I think I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess. I don't know for sure, but I'm going to guess that that aeration is going to provoke the yeah. volatiles more. Yes. And really, so you know, and the, somehow that smoky one, yeah, the which I one. which you can confirm by smelling. Oh, yeah, the higher temperature, smell the guy one lid too. The right. guy one lid was really smoky on the break. I took oh, a smell oh of it. Oh my god, this is nice, yeah, this yeah, is really nice, right? Almost, I don't want to say lapsangi because <laughs> probably that's not a word, not any lapsangi if you are our lesson, yeah. only refers to which our is the lesson, only one I really which know. has the mm. proper balance. Of love some. You know, not just the smokiness. But yeah, you gotta agitate that tea and get those volatiles. Those are gonna be your high aromas, your what we call them on the guy one litter, the high notes, kind of the ones that when it's cooler are going to be harder to access or just be stuck in the liquor kind of thing. Uh, really juicy, tasty, and oh, I mm. wanted to say, when I say steady, I just mean this is even. Third infusion, how much is it different from the second infusion? It's not. I so far it's pretty good. It's steady as a the rock. The brewer is good. The brewer is really <laughs> good. I have to say. I literally have to say because if I don't, I'm in big trouble. She's right there. <laughs> I was just thinking. You know, sometimes in cosmetics, people do like a dupe videos of a dupe a drugstore high end. Do 
you you don't wanna. But anyways, there's dupe videos. But this one. What's it called? Dupe. Yeah. D U P E. Okay. No, nope, doesn't make any sense to you. It's short for duplicate usually. Yeah. Like okay. Yeah. So means like you know you have forty dollars lipsticks or you can have a five dollar lipstick, similar texture, similar color. So low end. I thought you were gonna say forty and one forty. Oh. Anyway, forty and five doesn't matter. Anyway, it's not the gist. I was just thinking this tea brew at a high temperature could be a. A little dupe of uh, Lapsa Sucho because ah. the price is different. You can save some bucks if you like that, but high temperature. Mm. Oh, I guess that's a pro. Then you can brew low temperature to have a quite a different taste in it. What's that? I didn't know that's a dupe. That's interesting. It's like a little hack to get it, save some money, but get pretty close yeah. to the same thing. I got you now. Yeah, that's a sort yeah. of a, I guess, an internet meme that I was unaware of, as I am most of them. <laughs> well, do you agree though? Yes. I mean... Like how... Yes. It's not quite the same, I'm just saying, it's getting yeah, close. It's Give a me dupe. a little hint. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. a dupe. You don't expect the exact uh, thing, mm -hmm. but it's a nice hack. Um, how many grams did you put here? You said it's uh, just under four. four. Just yeah. under four. Right. If you really want to be nerdy, it was 3.7. Right. But uh, yeah, right. just under four grams. Why I ask that is because we usually suggest like a three grams for mm -hmm. this kind of a more traditional standard uh, guy one size. I think, um, you know, I often revisit the different things that I put out and sometimes revise, sometimes feel like, oh, that still works. And like in this case, I still feel like it's a pretty good suggestion mm -hmm. with the ratio because this is a three point almost a four, not yet four with this, mm -hmm. and this is a four infusion, and I feel like a, I can easily go for another four infusions. I was a little thirsty, so I bumped us up from three. Right. To three dot seven. That dot seven matters. Yeah, it matters. Uh, but usually we say with. The three grams of tea in this kind of ratio, uh, you can brew for four, five infusions. I think that still stands true mm -hmm. till this because uh, here is the same, right? We get uh, tea, for example, Joji uh, Homei. We get that pretty much since we started the business because yeah. I found this yeah, is a really lovely tea. <laughs> Uh, but obviously, we're not selling the same batch. We update tasting notes whenever we get new ones. Yep. Uh, <laughs> every now and then, I forgot to update the year, <laughs> which is bad. Uh, and the, the brewing, usually I don't do fine tuning. It's roughly there, like I always tell people, hey, don't yeah. stick with our brewing. That's how we brew, but you do yeah. whatever you want, yeah. kind of thing. Uh, that's why just to revisit this match, I think that our suggestion is still pretty good. The three grams the... is rock solid. Yeah. 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 And just a, if for those of you that aren't interested in fidgeting with scales every time, a little mm -hmm. hack is once you dial in, if you do weigh it the one time and throw it into your brewing vessel, you can take a look and kind of go, oh, okay, three grams is that much leaf. I, I won't weigh that. Generally, I don't weigh it. I just throw it in and I know, oh, that's about, that's about three grams based on the amount of leaf mm -hmm. in the guy mm -hmm. one. Um, so, and, and if you're not really not sure, you could weigh it once and then psh, you got it. Like for that tea for sure, and for any similar tea, the hack will generally work. You know, mm. Eyeball yeah. it. Yeah, you know. yeah. So steady. Yeah, really steady. Mm. I mean... And I'm gonna I'll give them a little tip. Okay. From the um, so first, you should check out our how to taste tea video, which uh, which was revolutionary for me. It really was a game changer. If you're coming at this as someone who's new to tasting, and you know you're sort of impressed by those whiskey and wine tasters and the tea tasters who have all these notes and stuff, um, you know it is it is impressive, but it's not born. You're not born with that. It's not genetic. You know, there you know there may be a such thing as a super taster or whatever based on all that blah blah blah. It doesn't matter. You can practice. You can get better. Check out that video. All I wanted to say about this was is this is a tea where if you take let that tea sit in your mouth after the sip and breathe over the tea, mm -hmm. it's going to be really divine. It's going to mm -hmm. be worth it. You're going to start and 
get it. Even if the words don't pop into your mind, you'll still mm -hmm. have the sensation, the experience, the delightful flavors and aromas will hit you no matter what. And don't worry too much about the words. Mm. Yeah, I feel like compared to the four infusions, I wouldn't say it has a major change or flips in terms of tasting mm. the nose. It's steady. really consistent, really steady. Mm. The gentle, gentle difference maybe is I feel like the later infusion, which I have a slightly longer steep time, mm -hmm. might be a touch more smoky. The smokiness mm -hmm. comes a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I was wondering if that matters. Hmm. Like, you know, I'm not 100% sure it's just the, the temperature I taste or the temperature of water I brew in. Because, look, there's always a variance, right? Mm -hmm. 92, 93 in that zone, I don't know which temperature it is. I don't trust it. Even with the kettles that tells you, oh, I boil, I set that to 92. But it doesn't mean that's what you brewed. It's mm -hmm. for sure lower than that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, then I also have a slightly longer steep time. Maybe that brew brings out that different right. taste. In right. it. But overall, really steady with... Because yep. um, why I want to mention that, a lot of times you will think, uh, those smokiness, those roastiness notes are the early infusions. Right. I don't know if you have that usually well, or expect. It is sometimes. Sometimes you have one, two infusions. Yes. That's, it's kind of washed away. Yeah. Right? And yeah. they're gone. So those are usually the from the process. Mm. You know? Like poor, you wouldn't uh, have... Might be too confusing, but... A lot of age poor, when you have a smokiness, it's totally from the tea itself. It's not the process. Right. Like, compared to if we have a heavy roasted wee, yan cha, the rock tea, later infusion, less roasted. Right. That goes away. So, um, interesting, yeah. So, just to say, in terms of this tea, is actually more inside the tea kind of mm -hmm. a consistent a little yeah. smokiness not just the not just the surface layer not surface just the layer finishing. first mm -hmm. few infusion exactly mm. i'm really Still. hit by the smooth texture right? mm -hmm. and the um the smoothness of the flavor too so by texture we mean the feel in the mouth but the flavor again it's a yeah. It's a black tea. It's got that sweet malty grainy, with the hints of smoke that we've been talking mm -hmm. about. But it's very... I still think it's a great... We often have it in the morning. It's a great morning tea. Yeah. But it's really not... Um, it, it doesn't have a... It's very gentle. It's very lovely. It's polite. It's not biting. It doesn't have any yes. uh, hard edges. Yes. Um, which is cool. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's nice to have a tea with a bit of a hard edge, but this is a very pleasant, round, soft... Yes, like in the morning, like I'm those slow waking up. With... That tells you how slow I wake up. But... It's really lovely how slow she wakes up. Uh, but what I mean is in the morning when I have that in the big teapot, tea jar, tea bottle we have, it's really, it's just a really gentle wake up. I don't notice the tea too much. I feel like... A, it's underappreciated by me because in the morning state, I wouldn't sip it and like, oh, what is this tea? Not at all, I'm just having that. <laughs> but when I brew this in Gong Fu tea, I have more notice the beautiful side of this tea. Actually, I really feel like this tea is better enjoyed in Gong Fu, say, mm, Gong Fu yeah. tea style than in the big teapot. It's not bad at all. It's just not going to bring out It just really shines sun. here. Yes. It really shines. Yes. I also want to talk about the leaf a little bit. Like the leaf, remember it started as a lustrous, deep, deep brown to black wiry. And now that it's opening up, it's like a beautiful mm -hmm. red brown, mm -hmm. deep, deep chocolatey brown really beautiful leaf like uh again i guess this cultivar with uh with uh, longjing with longjing and both longjing and jochi homei are kind of known for the beautiful leaf mm -hmm. it's no exception with this tea in my opinion i just love it dry leaf brood leaf it's yes. all stunning yeah uh, not just the flavor obviously is stunning and it's the most important thing but it's nice to have 
a beautiful leaf to look at after to touch uh, and uh, you should reach in when you're done with your tea grab the leaf feel the texture of the brood leaf get a sense of the resilience the, the, the freshness or the sort of the life in the leaf or that was in the leaf you can feel that really uh, it's really good to play with your food in that case mm. you know this is just uh, reminds me to do maybe one day do a video about uh, leaf amount not really leaf amount mm -hmm. with brewing it's a so when I see this, right, I was talking about a three grams and this a little bit more when I lose what? It's a little bit boss. No, no, look at boss, right? So I have to change my uh, infusion time, how I infuse this. But here is the question. Maybe we can talk, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment below. Do you think there is the best way to brew a tea? Because mm. I can always shorten the brewing time if I put too much leaf, like today and stuff, is there a best ratio? What are right. we changing? Or are we sacrificing right. or are we adding something by putting extra leaves to have shorter time? Or I put less leaf to have longer brewing time? Uh, oh, or do you that do question. that, right? Do yes. you do that kind of a play around with yep. the brewing? And do you find there any, is there any difference? Uh, I think that like if you play with all the sliders, right? Leaf amount, temperature, exactly. time. You can always you can have a way to accommodate the whatever. Right. And is the there fix. a prime one, like the gold one that you should try to hit? That's a great one. So let us know down there if you think there is and what your experience has been, and maybe, maybe you'll get a video if you're lucky. <laughs> oh well. Uh... I think we're going to keep drinking this. Yeah, for sure. This is a. But I think a, we're going to wrap up. At least five more infusions. Yeah. <laughs> this is really a good amount and uh, really consistent robustity. Mm. Wrap up the video here today. That's been Joe Chu Hong Mei. Again, yeah. just to recap, uh, not recap, but just to remind you, interesting thing that it is yeah. the same cultivar mm. as Longjing. Mm. Uh, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out and consider subscribing if you like content like this and like all the other awesome Chinese, tasting great Chinese tea stuff that we publish. Uh, and until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping. <laughs> I don't think that's my issue. I think it's your issue you need to study. Maybe you need to reflect on that. Not better. F. I need a microfiber cloth. Microfiber, microfiber cloth. Yeah. Microfiber cloth. Microfiber cloth. Microfiber cloth. <laughs> you think that helped me focus? Should. <laughs> no, it doesn't. If you're good.